God. Don't you? I'm glad I found one that makes me feel good. Man, if I had to measure up, uh, you know, serving the Lord, I went through a period of time one time I felt like I was back in public school in high school. I've done all right. Uh, I've done all right in grade school. Uh, they really liked me and I enjoyed being there. First grade teacher liked me so much she kept me two years. And uh, so I, I kind of took a liking. But when I got to high school, uh, man, I was going to excel. And I remember signing up for algebra. <laughs> it was pretty good about the first four or five days. And one day I was sitting in class and I started leafing through that algebra book. And I thought, what in the world have I got myself into? I can never uh, do this. I, I, I can never accomplish. And man, I, I found out what the guidance counselor was for. And I went and had a long talk with her. I couldn't measure up. It wasn't in me. Uh, maybe if I'd have studied harder before I started taking algebra, Zach, algebra wouldn't have been too bad. But where I'd slacked and I'd not, not uh, got the fundamentals, this was way over my head. And some folks is preaching a gospel like this that nobody. Zach was talking about the Pharisees. I got a preacher friend that I've known for years. Man, he, he, his number one goal is to tell people how wrong they are and how bad a shape the Christian world is in and who ain't living up to it. Folks, ain't nobody going to live up to it. Ain't nobody going to measure it up. Does that mean that we got to sit back and, and uh, not try and say I'm under grace? No sirree. we got to work as hard as we can work. But Zach, even as hard as we can work ain't enough. And we need something else. Don't want to understand it? Listen, algebra, I had to understand it to get a good grade and get a passing grade. This is something here that I, I don't have to understand. I just got to trust and believe. Yeah. I got to do my best to abide by it. May not know exactly what had happened. And I'll tell you right now, listen. Jesus said our righteousness was as filthy rags. He was sick to death. I'm telling you, he was so upset with the church. When he came in and started his ministry, I'm telling you, all he had to deal with was a bunch of people that was down and out, as Zach was talking about. You had these priests and these Pharisees and scribes walking around trying to per, uh, uh, trying to pre present themselves or trying to, to persuade people that, man, they had measured up and nobody could measure up. I'm telling you, but the Word of God said, where sin abound. Grace did much more about it. Aren't you glad for that? Praise the Lord forever. Brother Roger told the story one time and said they was these two dogs named Fido and Pee Pee. Said Fido, Fido and Pee Pee was standing outside of the door and they was hungry and said uh, Pee Pee told Fido and said I, I, I know where some food's at inside this door and said I wish I could open that door. And Fido said, I can open that door. Fifi said, no, you can't open that door. Said, uh, that's a big old door, a lot bigger than you are. And about halfway up, there's a lock on it. Said, you can't open that door. Fido said, Fifi, I sure can. I can open that door. He said, I'll prove it to you. He went over there and began to scratch on that door. He said, I thought you was going to open that door. He said, hang around a little bit and you can, you'll find out that I can open that door. Kept a scratching in a little while. A man opened that door. Fido said, did I tell you, Fifi, I can open that door. Not the same way with serving the Lord, Jack. I may not be able to do it, Jack. But the Word of God said, just keep on knocking. Hallelujah, Trevor. Don't ask me to open the door. Not once, but He told me to knock. Praise the Lord. We just got to trust Him. Just got to believe in Him. Got to obey His voice. Thank God forever. As Zach said, it requires sacrifice. 
We're living in a time and I'm getting ready to get myself in trouble again. But I do not care. I'm telling you, we serve a loving and a merciful God. We serve a compassionate God. We serve a, a friendly God. Yes, sir. I preached a message not long ago. And I preached it a few years ago. The, the difference between anybody can smile. But it takes a happy person to grin. Yeah. God will put a grin on your face. Yeah. Yes, sir. God will put a grin on your face. Sure. It will make you happy. I'm glad. I'm glad that He loves us. We're living, and, and as Zach was talking, and uh, I don't want to give anybody the wrong idea. I know how Zach believes. But we're living in a time more common. More common. We've got folks that's preaching. Boys, once you're saved, you can live any kind of hellish life and be a fit, a fit subject for the kingdom of God. Not true. Amen. God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. But we can leave Him. Amen, preacher. We can leave Him. God will never leave us. But we can leave Him. And they're preaching. Boy, let's give you money. Live however you want to. But the Word of God said, If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? I'm not going to make it, boys. I ain't going to go and say, man, I've got enough in the bank. I'm going to zoom right, zoom right in. All the works that I've done, if I lived a perfect life all my life, listen, all the works that I've done, if I could say, and I, there's nobody that can say that. Say that, have you done everything that good that you know to do? Have you helped everybody that you saw in need? Have you obeyed the Word of God right to a T? If I could say that, that still wouldn't be enough to get me into the portals of glory. What will get me into the portals of glory? Not what the Pharisee preach. Not what the scribe preach. Not what the Pharisee preach. But the blood of Jesus Christ. That what cleanses us from what? All unrighteousness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right. I believe if we're cleansed by the blood of Jesus, Jerry, it'll affect others. Thank God, it'll spread. Amen. And it won't be spread. I'm telling you, folks can't enjoy salvation because they're so upset that everybody ain't doing it right. <laughs> everybody ain't never done it right. Praise right. God forever. And if the world stands another million years, nobody will ever do it right. But the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us yes. from all unrighteousness. Yes. He makes us fit subjects for the oh, kingdom yes. of God. Aren't you glad to be saved? Yes. Thank God forever. How in the world would our church ever be blessed? And I'm not tooting Richard Harold's horn. But if every Sunday I got up here and beat on people and told people, hey, you ain't measured up, bless God, you're going to have to get in line or you ain't going to see God. Every one of you going to hell. Come on. Well, that'd make you feel like shouting, wouldn't it? We'll never shout because we've done a good job. Come on. But the reason we'll shout is because we accepted the love and mercies of Jesus Christ. That's what will make us shout. No, that we got something we don't deserve. Hey. You're right. We was over there last night. She watches that cash explosion, Ohio lottery, every Saturday night. Man, them people, they, it, it seems too easy. I, I don't really believe that, but all you got to do is go down there and push a button. And every time you push it, you get money. And them people just jump up and down and holler. Why? They jump higher over that than they do when they get their payday. Why does folks do that? They had to work for that payday. Yeah. They jump it up and down because they got something free. Yeah. Right. That's why a Christian ought to shout, we got something free. Right. Amen. Yeah. You're right. Praise God. Yes. I don't play the lottery if you do at your business. Never bought a lottery ticket. But I'm here to tell you, I'm only human. If I was to get out there on the parking lot and find a million dollar ticket, first of all, I might not holler real loud. 
<laughs> but that person said, see, man, lost the lottery. It's a million dollars. I try a little bit late to find out if you was the one that lost it. But I ain't going to aggravate you to death now. I ain't going to make you mad. I ain't going to embarrass you. But I'm just like anybody else. If nobody claimed that thing, tomorrow morning, this evening I call old Wally up and I said, Wally, I got some business to take care of. I'll see you that noon. Maybe. <laughs> I could cash that thing in. You say, preacher, not me. I throw it in the garbage. Well, you might do it. <laughs> That'll preach. Buddy, everybody's a winner with Jesus. Yes. Amen. You're right. Amen. Absolutely. A lot of people saw them in the garbage, not me. I'm claiming the price. Yes. Amen. I'm rich. I'm wealthy. Yes. I didn't deserve it. Yes. And I'm happy. Oh, yes. Thank God forever. We can enjoy the Lord. Oh, but you know yes. what? <laughs> when they want something, I was talking about this not too long ago. When they want to attack you, listen, that lion's den that, that they throw Daniel in, <coughs> They didn't feed them, them them lions, you know, like we feed one of our animals. No. Our cats down there, I won't go there, but they've never seen empty bowls since they've been on our place. <laughs> and that one was supposed to be a hunter. I was outside looking this morning. When she first came there, baby, there wasn't no birds or nothing. But the birds has found out that old Lulu's got it made. She don't have to hunt. Somebody's keeping her. Well, that'll preach. Somebody's yeah. keeping her bowl for her. Yeah. Them lions that they, they, they prepared to, to kill people in them lion's den, they didn't keep her belly full. They just got them. They just give them enough to keep them mean. That's the way of some Christians. They just got enough to make them angry. Praise the Lord. But we can get in and get our bellies full. Thank God forever. And nobody oh. had to worry about us biting our head off. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Let us pray. Father, we come before you Thank this morning. You. Thankful, Lord, that you've saved us, Lord. Not of our righteousness. Not of the good that we've done. We could never measure up. But you loved us so much, Lord. You blessed us, as Rami said at the beginning of the service. You blessed us on purpose, Lord. You didn't accidentally drop some out of your bucket, but Lord, you poured your bucket out upon us. And you blessed us. And you've cleansed us. If folks would look beyond the blood, if folks could look under the blood. And everybody that's saved today would be examined and could look past the blood. They would find that none, no, not one, is worthy of the redemption and of the salvation. But all the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for our wrong, for our shortcoming, for our failure, for our sin, cleanses us of all the unrighteousness. The Lord helped someone to realize this morning that on this last Sunday of 2015, they can be redeemed. And they can have a perfect score for 2015 because of your blood that was shed for our sin. I ask your Lord to move as only you can. I ask, Lord, that you would speak to hearts. Let men and women, boys and girls, see that you're not here today to beat them up. Sure you know about our sin. Sure you know about our failures. 
I'm sure you know about our wrongdoings. You know all about it. Not a thing has slipped by you. You know it all. But you're willing to throw all of that away this morning and cleanse us. Only through and by accepting you as Lord of our lives. So I ask, Lord, that you would give folks courage to say, Okay, Lord, I confess. I confess. Zach was talking about the rich young ruler. Jesus didn't need his money, but Jesus knew where his treasure was. He said, young man, if you want to find peace, if you want to find a new life, sell everything that you have and give to the poor. He knew that down deep in his heart, that's where that young man's treasure was and his riches and his belongings. You tried to tell him and to show him that you had to be first. You wasn't concerned if he had a lot of wealth. You wasn't concerned that he had riches. You just wanted to be above all that. But he went away sorrowful. Somebody, Lord, that you're speaking to today will leave this place sorrowful today because somebody couldn't say, Lord, I'll put you above everything else in my life. You'll be number one. It don't have to be that way, Lord. We know that. So help folks to realize that all you want to be is number one. You're not looking for perfection. You're not looking for heroes. But you're looking for somebody who will say, He's number one in my heart and my life. As we sing a verse and chorus of song, as the church begins to stand, Christians pray and Lord be merciful and sinners come to redemption that only comes through and by Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Nothing can force Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Listen to this next line. It's not of good Say, whoa.